Today we are filming with the British Motor Show and we are at the Coriton facility. Guys, these make sustainable fuels so you can run basically any vehicle that, you know, your classic vehicle, your run of the mill vehicle on a sustainable fuel that could be used in the normal systems it is delivered already. Guys, we're here with the British Motor Show with an amazing car here. You guys know and understand what this is. This is a British version, a right-hand drive Ford Mustang, five liter V8, loads of horsepower, but guys, can this car run on a sustainable fuel? Let's find out a little bit more about this from Andy from the British Motor Show. So what we're planning on doing is, what well, we know that you know electric cars, they're the future. We all recognize that. But some people aren't ready at the moment for an electric car. They might live in a block of flats. They might not be able to afford it yet, or it's just not right for them. So what we're trying to do is understand what can we do for those people? We're, we're not saying that this is going to replace the electric car. We know that that's the future. But if I've got a classic car, I don't want to convert it to electric, but I want to do the right thing. So can we run a V8 Mustang sustainably. That's what we're trying to find out. So what we're going to do, we're going to use Coriton Fuel, our partner in this is Coriton, we're going to use their fuel and we're going to run this from now till the show. And we are going to calculate with their boffins how much CO2 is coming out of this car. And we know it's going to be a lot less because the fuel is really, really sustainable. And we'll say, right, the CO2 for running this car for 8,000 miles was X. It would have been Y if we'd ran it on normal fuel. And the equivalent EV is roughly Z, let's say. And we're going to produce our findings at the show. What we're trying to do is show that you can have a wonderful V8 car and the noise of that and be more sustainable until the moment is right to move to electric. What we're trying to do is we're trying to help car fans who aren't quite ready to move or have got a classic car. We're trying to find a way to help them run it more sustainably and do the right thing. And it might be that your everyday car is electric, but we don't want it to be a real problem to run these. And with our partners at Coriton, we think you can run a petrol car and it might only be you do a thousand miles in a year and you're in your wonderful V8 Mustang, but you can do it sustainably and you're doing the right thing for the environment. That's what we want to find out. So you've heard Andy's idea about this, running his five litre V8 petrol head car alongside an EV to find out what's more sustainable. What's your thoughts on that? I think it's a brilliant idea. It enables us to showcase that there are uh, complementary solutions to electrification. Something that we can make a tangible difference today uh, when we're looking at using cars that are already on the road. That's it, and people always say, is filling my car up actually going to make a difference? You know, And I think it's a small start to a big ending, right? Because the scrappage schemes are a matter of binning all those years of miles that have burnt, you know, the car is CO2 efficient by a certain age. This car allows it to be better than CO2 efficient, correct? By using the fuel. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and, and any production of anything you have, there's always embedded CO2. Now, actually, you're better off paying that off and, and keeping it going as, as long as you can. You know, recycling is good of, you know, where it's absolutely needed. But actually, if you've got a vehicle that is absolutely fine to use, it's still got a lot of life left in it, the best thing you can do is just make sure you change what you're fuel, fueling that vehicle with. And that's where we come in, because we've got fuels that are sustainable, i.e. they're not having any further contribution or, or negative contribution on the environment. Okay. How? <laughs> so I know everyone's out there screaming at the screen, how? How do you develop something that is basically replicating a fuel that we can set on fire that is not basically a fossil fuel? Tell me how that is, is generated. All right, so first off, um, really key point to, 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 to get to here. As soon as you burn a carbon, you're going to produce CO2 at the yep. top. So we're not going to get away from that. We're not going to try and pull, we're not going to pull the wall over in anyone's eyes about it. Okay? There is going to be CO2 at the top. But that CO2, we've taken out the environment to make the fuel in the first Already. instance. Yep, so we're recycling CO2. So you burn it, you create the CO2, and the environment it goes. And we're extracting that CO2 back out going through a nice complicated process and we're creating a, a fuel for it again and the cycle just goes round and round and round and round. So basically what you're saying, instead of going and digging out these crude oils which are non-replaceable, when they're gone, they're gone, what you're doing in some ways is generating a replacement for that through a product that has already been used, has already been used as CO2, if that makes sense. It, it is exactly that, that, that sort of notion. We, you know, Crude oil, uh, it's, it's got all that embedded CO2 in it, it's tucked away nice and safe. We want to keep it there where it's not doing any damage. But what we do want to do is feed a process 
with CO2 that is, that is free CO2. So we call it this, this. It's free in the environment that's come from many other processes. It could be from concrete manufacturing. It could be from a restaurant creating, you know, yep, burning okay. its things. Anything like that, we capture that CO2 back again and we make a liquid. And there we go. It, you know, we can, we can fuel a vehicle. In my opinion, my only worry, okay, which I want to ask is how you're going to basically fit this into the delivery of a fuel already, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, so um, firstly, um, when, we, when we talk about how we, we design these fuels and how we manufacture them, yeah. the whole point of them is that they look chemically identical to normal fossil fuel. So the okay. good thing about that is that you can put them down the same pipeline networks, you can use the same storage tanks, the same wow. fueling units, or the same forecourts to dispense these fuels. They, they're, they're not um, some unique uh, sort of type of fuel that, that's got to be handled in any really sort of specific ways. Now, clearly, at the moment, we're, we're in a position where supply is, is limited, but there's good supply, and we're, we're targeting certain segments of the automotive industry, yeah. especially the classic industry, because here, you know, we can design fuels. We don't just have one fuel. We design a whole range of wow. fuels. And we can say, well, actually, you know, for that particular industry, we're going to remove all the nasties that the classic industry don't like, things like ethanol. You know, you, we hear about you know, E5 or E10 at the pumps, for instance, but actually for the classics, they don't like that. They prefer an E0. We can do exactly that. And, and we have done that already. And we've got some vehicles that have been using it um, you know, today um, for, you know, in, in pretty expensive vehicles as well. Yeah. But likewise, you know, you've got modern vehicles. You know, most modern vehicles, you know, less than 10 years old, they're more than happy to run probably up to E20, even E30. Um, yeah. And a lot of us, we can put those fuels back in. So, you know, we always say to people that talk to us around, well, what can you do for us? Well, I say, well, well, your oyster. You know, you yeah. tell me what you want. What can we, we do, do for you? Yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, most people are worried. You know, the deterioration of fuel over the years can, can uh, damage fuel lines. It can damage the, the engine. Even, you know, if you leave a fuel in, in your tank for six to a year, six months to a year, that fuel can become stale and damage certain parts of the car. How long does this fuel last? So let's say Andy parked the car up today and a year's time we went and jumped in that car. Is that fuel going to last? It, yeah, I mean the, the, the great thing about these fuels, they are very stable. Um, so you know they're, they're not they're not like a living, breathing sort of bio normal biofuel that you may have been used to in the past. Yeah, these are these are very stable. Will sit there six, twelve months down the line, even even longer than that. And some of the fuels that we've developed will sit in fuel tanks for, for a, you know, a couple of years plus without any any problems whatsoever. Wow. Okay, and you know most of you people are sat at home going, hang on a minute. This guy in a shed has developed something that I'm going to put in my car that has a manufacturer's warranty on it. You guys aren't in a shed. This facility is unbelievable. It's huge. It's you know spread across years of you know knowledge and science behind it. You know, in my opinion of a, a motor vehicle, it's a very complicated combustion engine. People have trusted you in Dakar, in the top end of motorsport. This thing is tried and tested. It's working. How do you see it working for the Mustang? Do you think Andy's going to notice any difference at all? Uh, no, so this is the good thing. You shouldn't notice any difference whatsoever. And, that, and that's the key thing here. We're not going out to say this is going to give you phenomenal amounts more power or you know, even more miles per gallon. We want this fuel to be you know, im imperceptible from anything else that you might fill up with. It runs the same. You know, you're not getting any hesitation issues. You're not getting any fueling issues that you yeah. might get with. You know, people get worried about ethanol in fuel sometimes, or they they get worried that actually I'm I'm going to destroy my pride and joy. The whole point of these fuels is that they are indistinguishable from a normal fossil fuel. Wow, I love that. You know, guys, will this car be CO2 efficient? Will it be cheaper to run? And basically, are we going to beat the EV? God, we know EVs are going to be there, you know, throughout the future, you know, in, our, in our future at least. But will it work? Can we keep the V8s on the road? Can we keep the classics on the road? And just a massive thank you for, you know, putting all the effort into it. And uh, let's see what we can get up to, shall we? Yeah, well, thank you, Sam. Let's, um, you know, hopefully we'll put it to the test. No worries. And thanks to the British Motor Show. Thanks for following. Keep watching. Subscribe. Hit that like button. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys.